Welcome back. It's the Friday Flex edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for us to find out what the headlines are saying on major head uh, newspapers across the country. And we're starting with the daily independent newspaper. The front page there leads with Tinubu APC oppose INEC staff testifying in Atiku's petition. The writer there, OB6 order to question INEC on ICT experts used in poll. And above the masthead, you have Tinubu signs bill raising retirement age of judges. Enugu governor Mba meets Tinubu presses for Nnamdi Kano's release. And going down a bit lower, you have PDP vows to deploy strength maximally in National Assembly leadership election. Once APC, INEC, derailing democracy. Well, that's the much will be taken from the Daily Independent. Okay, we move from Daily Independent to Business Day. Business Day <laughs> leads with the <coughs> sorry. headline. Oh, <coughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> Uh, subsidy removal buys breathing space for debt-ridden Nigeria. That's what Business Day leads with. Gold export hits 78 billion naira, highest on record. That's also the smaller headline on Business uh, Day. Anger trails over SARS indigent buyers property law comments. Uh, Ipman sees private investment CNG lowering petrol price. That can be seen on page two of Business Day. More commuters switch to BRT on high transport cost. That is on uh, page 35. Nigeria misses out on Canada's visa-free travel list. We can also find that story, the full story, on page 35 as well. With Tech Edge, you'd see better life than parents. Uh, that is a story that starts on page one and continues on page two. Uh, those are the headlines from Business Day we'll take. All right, from there we move to the Punch newspaper. And the Punch newspaper this morning is leading with Tinubu's meeting with lawmakers failed to resolve zoning crisis. That's over the National Assembly leadership. Tinubu's meeting with lawmakers fails to resolve zoning crisis. Above the masthead, you have rep step down judgment debt payment. You also have president sign a bill on judges' retirement age. And the Ogun community residents stranded as flawed overruns. Link Road. Well, that's the much will be taken from the Punch newspaper. Okay. Um, from Punch newspaper, we go to the next. Uh, Friday, Leadership Friday. Um, that's what we'll, we'll be looking at now. Leadership Friday. Uh, it leads with Tinobu sticks with Apabio Abbas, lobbies, lawmakers. And the writers are, says is about Nigeria's project accuses Goji Aliori Wamako uh, of stalling progress. Yari, Kalu, Jimo Ibrahim, Wase, Betara, absent. Opposition will spring surprises on Tuesday, PDP boasts. <clears throat> we also have 45,000 Nigerians may miss Hajj over visa hitches. Transactions suffer as federal government restricts MDA's accounts. Uh, Kano demolition, police arraign 106 suspects for theft, break-in. And um, OB6 tribunals not to question INEC on ICT experts. And gunmen kill Catholic priest in a do state. That's an unfortunate one. And another unfortunate one, uh, no longer news now, Dark Communication founder Dr. C for burial June 22. Okay. Those are the headlines from a Leadership Friday and eventually the final newspaper that we're taking for this morning. All right, and we have been joined on Off the Press by Gide Johnson, Chief Lecturer 
Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Jide Johnson, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me now? I yes, can. Okay. Good morning to you and happy Friday. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. It is always a pleasure to be with you. Now, let's look at this um, president signing the bill on judges' retirement age. How, how did it hit you when you saw that? And we're taking that um, from the front page of the Punch newspaper. Well, I, I guess the, amend, the amendment bill was signed, was, was prepared by the 10th Assembly, and it was prepared before the expiration of Buhari's administration. And from the some of the inside sources we I, I, I got I was able to gain from, from the press, the former attorney general of the Federation, Abra Kawalami, advised the dead president Buhari not to sign it. So it was shocking to me to learn that President Tinubu signed this um, this particular bill into an act. Um, for me, uh, like what I said when he made the promises concerning doing judicial reform, uh, for me, I think that the president has scored an own goal here in signing this particular, this particular bill. I think what should have been done is for this bill to be presented before the 10th Assembly, because the 10th Assembly is the Assembly for its presidency and not the 9th Assembly. However, some will argue that government is a continuum and that government does not exist in vacuum. But from a medical point of view, I don't think that the president ought to have signed this bill into an act. But he has done what he has done. He has become the law of the nation. And we wait and see how, how, how it goes. Because if Buhari did not sign it, the question you ask is why, would, why should Tinubu sign it? Okay. Uh, well, um, maybe some people will also argue that um, he had good information and... Uh, Buhari had wanted him to have something to do uh, when he comes, he begins with that. Uh, like, like, like Jonathan, for instance, did a, a conference uh, that he felt the next administration, that is that of Buhari, should come and uh, revisit and then sign into law uh, the national conference that was had. Unfortunately, when Buhari came, he didn't sign it into law. So it is a good thing for for, for presidents or for people who are handing over the baton to the next person to believe that the government is a continuum. So I, I don't know, why did you really, or why do you really have those misgivings that he shouldn't have signed it into law, apart from the fact that it's, it was not done during his tenure? That there is a lot of litigation surrounding the 2023 election, and a key component part in deciding the outcome of the cases, it um, it is the judiciary, and then here is the judiciary uh, being 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 rewarded, quote unquote, with an extension to their retirement age. Like I said, from legal point of view, from administrative point of view, there's nothing wrong with the president signing this. But from ethical point of view, I'm not just talking from ethical uh, point of view, um, because you you have litigations here and there, and then here you have people that will. That will take that will, that will take decision with respect to the outcome of 2023 elections, being rewarded, um, being rewarded with extension with an extension of five years to their retirement age. So as far as I'm concerned, if Wari did not sign that, Wari signed a lot of a lot of bill into law based on the amendment of the of the Ninth Assembly. So the question is why did he not sign this? And this is critical. And then you have the former Attorney General. Counseling the then president Wari not to not to append it. Hello, Mr. Johnson. The tenth assembly, and then the tenth assembly will look at it, and then it will be the first point of call for the tenth assembly. Uh, and then, I, if are you the, saying, Mr. Johnson, in their own wisdom? The, sorry, are you saying that um, it is possible this signing into law of this bill uh, will affect the outcome of the uh, tribunal? Because no, 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 like no, no, said, no, 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 no. What, what, what I'm seeing in effect is, 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 is that it is subject to various interpretation. Mm. Now you you be playing into the hands of 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 critic. Um, if the outcome of the 
the, 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 the various decisions at the various tribunals across the state. Not even a lot of people are focusing on the presidential tribunal. Do you have you have cases across board from House of Assembly to National Assembly, National Assembly to state governor. So essentially if it does not favor the opposition in the long run, I'm just saying that you have just given some balls to the opposition to to to, to fire at you. Mm. At, 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 at criticizing you that's just what 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 i meant with, with with that in any case there's nothing there's no law that stops him from signing i'm just saying from ethical point of view and that this should not even be the first bill he appeared his signature to because we still have um some some serious and then i think is this 60 days or 90 days that he has to do that so well um Everything is subject to varied interpretation. But my own interpretation is that this particular bill should have been stepped down, represented as an executive bill before the tenth assembly and the tenth assembly would look into it. And then once if the tenth assembly passed it, then it would uh, he would sign an appendix signature to it. Okay, let's remain with the courts there. Um, Tinobu APC opposed INX staff testifying in Artiku's petition. We've seen this playing out a lot in this tribunal, in these uh, cases that are going on. Um, something will come, and lawyers have a certified true copy presented in the court. The same INEC that, off, uh, that yes, offered that or that gave out, issued that certified true copy, will now oppose it. Uh, the APC will oppose it. The, uh, the president will oppose it. And everybody that is that is uh, not on the side of uh, the people who are presenting this will oppose it. And it seems as if we are dragging our feet or the, the judiciary is dragging its feet in getting things done. So when you saw this headline, Tinobu's, uh, yes, uh, Tinobu APC opposed INX staff testifying in Atiku's position. Granted that we've seen this uh, opposition to documents and witnesses being called by, by the APC, by Tinubu's lawyers, by INEC itself. Uh, what does it tell you? How does it strike you? Why, why should it surprise you? The, the defendant will want to maintain the status quo ante, and the petitioner will want to obtain um, the status quo ante. So, Basically, you so do, you, do you expect that the council for INEC that conducted the election or the council for APC and Tinubu Shetima that are beneficiary of the outcome of the election to support whatever evidence uh, evidences that the petitioners are bringing uh, in, in to court? No, they will surely oppose it. But the key thing there is that you see that uh, despite the opposition by the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth respondent to the pe to the petition, the court seems to be admitting those evidences. So that's what if the court refused, if the court had refused to admit these evidences, then that's these documents as evidence. That's when we should have should have raised some eyebrows. But the court is doing what they are supposed to do, and that's the beauty of of it all. The 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 the, the respondent we oppose, the petitioner we present. So. And it's left for the panel to accept or to reject. But as far as the proceedings are going, the, 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 the panel is accepting this as evidence. And they said they will respond to their written addresses. I'm sure that in the history of Nigeria, there has never been any election petition tribunal at the national level that has generated this type of public interest. In, in virtually everybody has become, has become a lawyer by, 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 by default uh, because you need to see how Nigerians follow what is going on. And I think that it was a great disservice to this nation for them not to have allowed, at least to for our jurisprudence, at least for, for, for the strengthening of our democracy, for them not to have allowed cameras into the in, 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 into the court for Nigerians to have an opportunity to even learn from what is going on, for INEC to learn, for the parties to learn, uh, because there are things that we need to reform when it comes to our electoral electoral processes uh, so that we can have a different democracy. Courts are doing what they're doing. I just remembered uh, something that made headlines uh, a few days ago that someone who brought a petition to uh, the courts uh, saying the, the president-elect then should not be sworn in and gave the reasons that uh, they were petitioning uh, was slammed. 
uh, 10 million naira per individual. That was like uh, up to 30 million or 40 million uh, for someone bringing a petition. Why not just strike it out? And you're giving, they called it frivolous. And I was asking myself, frivolous by whose definition? Is that what the law says? That you bring something that, to the court? That, yeah. that's, that's, one of, that's one of the things that, um, that struck me with the kind of fine that courts were imposing on, on people that have gone to court to challenge the outcome to 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 up to to explore the, the 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 legal option and i see 40 million 50 million and then you begin to wonder how how did the court arrive at such such fines and labeling that as as as, as frivolous in the process you are trying to destroy the the people's confidence in the judicial process are you trying to discourage people from coming that okay if you come to if you are pro judiciary to seek justice and if justice does not cover your way, and then you you'll be fine. So in the process, that will serve as a deterrent for people in future for them not to come. I don't know how they came about the money, but you know, once my Lord rules, um, they ruled, and then um, you can only challenge their ruling by going to a higher court. And I'm not too sure whether someone wants to approach an, a higher court to seek redress when you have already been fined 10, 10, 10, 10 million, 10, 10 million for seeking. Uh, address that okay. I you I want my approach you my lord to to give the interpretation to this matter. What's this matter? Well, the the matters were not heard. They were just struck out, and you said this is frivolous. Okay. Well, let's move from the court to well, Lagos State. <laughs> Lagos State, the State House of Assembly uh, Business Day has a, a headline there where anger trails on Basas indigenous biased property law comments. Um, oh. Yes, that's well, such uh, law. his uh, uh, acceptance speech. Yes. So what, what he's just appealing to pure sentiment to, to those that uh, gave him the opportunity to set to, 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 to set record to be the first person that won the speakership three times for three consecutive terms in Lagos. As far as I'm concerned, such law cannot stand. Such law will be challenged. This is, it is Lagos State is Lagos State. Leg People don't forget the special status of Lagos. Lagos was once the capital of, of Nigeria, the, and Lagos is the commercial, uh, commercial, commercial capital of Africa. So if you, even you are stopping Nigerians from, 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 from buying land in Lagos, then what will happen to foreign, and then you are calling for foreign direct investment. If a foreigner cannot come and invest in your economy, how would your economy grow? The president traveled to France looking for foreign direct investment. And besides that, such law will not stand. There's no law that stops any Nigerian from getting land anywhere. The basic right you need to own a property is, is, is your citizenship. As long as you're a citizen of Nigeria, you have every right, the right of food association, the right to own, to, all of the rights are embedded in your fundamental human rights. So he's just playing to the gallery. So as far as I'm concerned, how do you think that such law will stand instead of time? What do you think that law to the Supreme Court? What do you think will be the judgment of the Supreme Court concerning such laws? And I don't know how these people think, how backward they will be thinking in, in, the, in their thought pattern. We will be thinking of such in the 21st century when you have Nigerians owning properties across the length and breadth of the world. When countries of the world, Saudi Arabia, Dubai. Dubai grew its economy by calling on people to come and invest, by calling on people to come and own property in their, in their, in their, besides, who is a Lagosian? He himself, is he a Lagosian? Is he an indigenous? He's not an indigenous. A majority of them in the Lagos State House of Assembly are not indigenous. They are not indigenous of Lagos. He himself is from, is from, is from Adakuta, is from Ogun State. So is he a Lagosian? Sometimes, you just wonder what, what goes on in the mind. If you see, when they express their thought pattern, it tells you the kind of person, it tells you the kind of, it tells you the kind of person they are, and it tells you the level of their intelligence and the level, the, 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 the level of their knowledge. And you, you, you'll be shocked that these are the people that have been given the responsibility to manage the affairs of the state. If you go about and engage in such infantile, infantile thinking. Talking about the level of the people, the infantile thinking, the, the level of those who have been given such privileges, it, it is very sad, isn't it, that at this state in time of our existence as a people, that we are at this state where we, we seem to be going backwards. 
And sadly, too, that the last election has thrown up these things more than ever before, where Nigerians are beginning to be so polarized along ethnicism, you know, tribe and ethnic and religion, isn't it? Very sad. And yeah, it, it, is, it is also sad in the sense that the president today is from Lagos State. He contested the election from Lagos State. So he's the president of Nigeria. And under his watch, somebody will sit in the secret throne of the State House of Assembly of Lagos and will make such horrendous statement. Such horrendous statement that should be condemned by her. Uh, I don't know whether the president will see himself as the president of Lagos or the president of Nigeria. And he shouldn't be coming from the stable of this from the state of the president. I think he is 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 an insult to, 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 to the totality of, of his values, of his principle, and of his beliefs and of his leadership style. As far as I'm concerned, that's a condemnable act. And I'm telling you, he's just going to regard he was just overwhelmed with with the success of the fact that um, there was an onslaught against is is becoming the speaker because was almost consumed by the fact that oh, we want an indigent to be the speaker of Lagos and uh, in order to appeal and assuage the feelings of those that have raised opposition against him. So you have to see what he said. I just meant that that's just a political statement. Mm -hmm. You do not see the light of the day. Mm -hmm. If you see the light of the day, I can assure you that people will go to court and the court will rule over that matter. I can assure you, I can assure you on that. That law will be declared null and void and of no effect. You can't stop a Nigerian from moving from there through the length and breadth of Nigeria. You can't stop a Nigerian from owning property. You can't stop a Nigerian from operating a business in Nigeria. If you are looking for foreign direct investment in Nigeria and in Lagos for that matter, and then you are come, you are passing obnoxious law that stops people from owning property, then how do you want to grow the economy? I, I just wonder the way these people think. They, they think that when we talk about the commercial viability of Lagos, when we talk about the income, revenue, generation, capacity of Lagos, did, 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 did it come from the indigent? Or it comes from the residents? When you go to America, they give you residency permit. If, if you have residency permit and you go property in the United States of America, now talk about Nigeria, all of them that are ministers, all of them, even him that is talking, I'm sure you have property across the length and breadth of of, of, of the United States of America and Canada and the rest of it. And you see, their children will not even be in Nigeria. Their children will be abroad and their children, even have residency, will also have property. And I tell you, it just tells you the mindset of the people that we put in, in leadership position how myopic, how narrow-minded, how bigoted they are in their thinking. It's unfortunate, but, but would you, would that you, is what it is. Mr. Johnson, would you say, because all of this we saw playing out during uh, the elections in March, would you say that the state executive, and indeed even President Tinubu, um, has done enough to address the situation? They have not done anything with respect to that. That act was not condemned. That action was not condemned, and then um, you saw that I, 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 I was, I was, I was. For example, during the election, I was, I was harassed, I was intimidated. I knew what happened when I was putting my foot down. That well, you know what? You allow anybody to cast their vote according to their conscience. Let them vote according to where they want to vote. You don't have to intimidate this. You don't have to do that. All of that was done with respect to other people that they think that have different political persuasion. And I think that we did speak out enough. And I think that the police did not prosecute people that uh, that were led to have, to, have, to have fermented violence during that during that 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 period and then people did not come out openly to speak and condemn such ignorant behavior on the part and then once you begin, once you allow criminality to to, to to the seed of criminality to sow it's just a matter of time you begin to see you begin to harvest criminality across the length and breadth of of, 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 of of the nation and of the country so as far as i am concerned that those acts were not were not were not condemned enough, and the people that were accused were not were not were not arrested and prosecuted. Even we don't even know the state of investigation on such matters. I I I I I, I knew some of my students that were intimidated because by virtue of their looks, they look like someone that is not from the southwestern part of the country. Unfortunately for them, they are from the southwest. Why do you have to? 
why do you have to why why why, why discriminate mm, why discriminate yeah, you don't want the rwanda you don't want the rwanda experience you know i had to i wrote an article that was published that before we rwanda lagos the beauty of lagos is is lagos is the melting pot of nigeria mm -hmm. in in you know, when we do research and then you want to limit your study you want to limit your study to lagos one of the justification you provide for it to be a national study is that and every family in Nigeria at least has a representative in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And that itself gives you, you need to go and look at many, many research that have been done by scholars across the board to justify the use of Lagos as, 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 as their population in order for them to extrapolate to, to Nigeria, <coughs> to, to, to Nigeria. That is a port pori is the melting pot. The port pori is 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 where you have the the melting pot of all culture and civilization in Nigeria. What are you looking for in Nigeria that you not find in Lagos? That's the beauty of Lagos. That's the beauty of cosmopolitan cities like New York. And so, one begins to well, also wonder. One begins to also wonder what threat the indigents of Lagos uh, may feel uh, they are facing that would require. Some sort of law to if you, protect them. If you ask him, if you ask the speaker, who are the indigenous of Lagos? For him to define. And then what is Lagos? Now, when people talk about the indigenous of Lagos, are they talking about the indigenous of Lagos Island? Or are they talking about the indigenous of Lagos State? There are two things. Most people do not know that Lagos was a colony, a colony that was limited to Moshalashi. The, 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 the boundary of Lagos was Moshalashi. Moshoglashi in Eduro, that has the boundary of between Lagos and Western region. And then when states were created in 1967, it extended, it extended to the boundary between Songwater, Bega, and these other axes. So, Ekbe and the rest of it. So, when people begin to talk about what they talk about, because they don't have a sense of history, but they are just fortunate to be in leadership position. And because leadership has been trust on them, and the they are the they, they are writing history. They play the role of revisionist. They play the role of revisionist. So revisiting revisiting history. So for Lagos, who, Lagos, don't forget that the first time we had a, a, a representative in the in the in the legislative council in 1922 under Clifford Constitution, which was an attempt to democratize the process of colonial administration, where Lagos were elect to representative. And Calabar will elect one representative into the into the into the legislative council that Clifford Constitution. It was based on residency, one year residency, and then an income of I think 100, 100 pounds. So it's always been based on residency. So people people that don't have history of our, our politics, uh, how Nigeria evolved as a nation, how Nigeria evolved as a political space, and then are given responsibility to be in charge of managing the affairs of the nation. We tend to forget about the history and when we want to be a revisionist and they will take our measures to justify their, their, okay. their, their payments. As far as I'm concerned, it's an unserious minded and it's an unserious decision that we shouldn't pay attention to. Okay, uh, Julie Johnson, thank you so much. Uh, right now, we've just seen uh, someone in position doing hate speech. And I think it's high time the citizen, the office of the citizen begins to hold our people responsible. It's not when I say something, it becomes hate speech. And when someone in government says it, he goes scot-free. <clears throat> we should start uh, doing some things to tell them that they can't talk carelessly uh, whenever uh, they want to address us. But that's story for another day. And we'd like to thank you at this moment for uh, being a, a part of this program. As always, it was a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Okay, that was G.D. Johnson. I don't know if he can still hear us. G.D. Johnson is the chief lecturer in the Nigerian Institute of Journalism here in Lagos. He joined us for Off the Press. Giving history one-on-one -on -one there mm -hmm. to those who are still ignorant yeah. about certain things in Lagos. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll be coming back shortly with our very first hot topic. We want to take a look at the mandate given by President to Nick to find solutions to the unacceptable poverty Nigerians are going through because of the removal of fuel subsidy. Stay with us. <laughs>